All right, man. Let's get into it. All right, man. Anonymous back in the building. Listen, yes, I, I want to yes, say I want to say thank you for being one of my biggest contributors, man. You alone with Swamp Girl. Thank you very much for sending me information in the background so I can get it out to the masses. And shout out to everybody else that be sending me information, videos, texts, content, all that good stuff. But man, listen, OK, but let me give a disclaimer. All right, because this came from you. I, I want people to understand that the, what we about to listen to, okay, this this came from my man Anonymous right here. All right, so first disclaimer is the opinions of the guests is not the opinions of the host or the channel. All right, this is his opinion. This is his thoughts. This is what he thinks, okay? Second disclaimer is that Lockout Men and the Recruiter Call Channel is not going after the mother trucker news okay we have nothing against alex and what he does over there on his channel me personally i think his channel is good it's informative shout out to him to, to keep it up but what we about to listen to is is a video that anonymous has sent to me he reached out to me and he said look man i i, I got some thoughts about this one because 2024 it's changing. So, Anonymous, let's get into a little bit of the video, and right. we'll, we'll get your thoughts on it right quick. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. This is very interesting here. You know, uh, we always talk about the scams of leasing a truck and the leasing purchase agreements that just set you up to fail, where you're paying $1,000, 2000 a week, four to $6,000 for a truck. And you pretty much have to still take care of everything. And at the end of everything, you know, some say when they're almost done paying their truck, then the company doesn't want to work them. Then they're mad that they want to pay off this truck and they try to get them into another truck. So how well are these leasing agreements and do they want you to fail? And the thing about this is the FMCSA wants your lease purchase agreements so that they could go after this and look. You know, uh, Mother Truckers, this is very interesting, but do you think lease purchase agreements in the trucking industry are mostly scamish or not? Hate to disrespect. Let's start with that question right there. So Anonymous, he posed the question. He asked, do you think predatory leasing is scamish? What's, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I've seen some of the right to contract, I mean, your so-called lease agreement. Then you have um, the law, I think it's uh, 337A or something like that, or C, is that they should give you the real freight car. When a lot of these lease purchase companies, especially some of the big Chicago companies, they don't give you the lease purchase. They give you a load information sheet, which that's illegal. And they've been stealing that for a very long time, as far as no fuel surcharge. Even people have told me that, yeah, you know, we get the do surcharge. Those lease are charged. That's wow. You know, you can't expect a person to make a living off a couple of dollars a month and think that they're going to pay off something where they barely can pay their bills at home. It's impossible. It's just, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a scam. It's definitely a scam. Okay. Okay. Expect anyone having a great lease purchase agreement, but for the most part, you know, I, I truly. Now, this is my opinion. I feel like there's a lot of business models out there that want you to fail, but know that by the time you find out, you know, you've almost already paid off the truck, then they put another person in there. So let's. Okay, so let's stop him right there on that little part right there. Now, he said in his opinion that there are predatory leases out there. They set drivers up to fail when they come do the damn thing. And when it's almost time to pay off the truck, it seems like that relationship sours. So. My question to you is, by him and his opinion, you mentioned about a while back, he went out to one of the biggest Chicagoland companies and did a profile on them. My question to you is, was you there at the time when he made the stop out there? Well, I actually came not long after he was up there. Probably a few months later, you know, bought a truck at least one of their trailers, but I recovered some of their trailers. I know from talking to people and people questioning me and asking me when they see me roam around that yard and see my truck, notice different writing and everything on it. They, they, they are not, how can I say it? They are, they're not good people. You know what I mean? They, 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 that guy, 
went up there knowing what he was getting himself into. They're not just going to let you walk around freely with a mic and interview people who can't know. And he definitely wasn't up there for no bulls game. That's a bunch of bull crap, I think. You know, not to throw no shade on him, but he has never done another video about that couple of people started going at his head about that. And he knows that he was paid. He knows he was paid. He's getting no, you know, uh, straight up the net. You you can try to go up there if you want and do an interview. And they're going to tell you off the muscle. Well, hold up now. There's, you know, so you can and can't ask you. Keep a smile on your face. Walk around with you with this microphone and like, everything's all right. Yeah, so he definitely, he knows what's going on. And I just would like to see when, you know, the ship, because the ship is going down. The Titanic is starting to sink. They got a hole in the bottom. They started to go down. I just want to know what he's going to say when, uh, yeah, when, it's, when it's all said and done. So he's talking about the FMCSAs. They're getting their hands dipped into all this predatory leasing now because all these drivers is complaining about how they are being treated. There was an article where FMCSA is looking at doing the law about changing how their leasing agreements is set up. It probably might be set up to the point of there may not even be those type of leases no more. If you're a 1099 driver working for a company, they're gonna probably make you a company driver working up under w2 i'm not sure you you could probably tell me a little bit more about that because you told me about that as well yeah what's gonna happen i think if you're a company or if you're a lease driver they're probably gonna go ahead and make the company do this one or two things they can do out of some of the companies especially the one up in chicago the big one they do not have a great mc no none of the mc numbers are any good that's why they they change llc's like draws so What's going to probably happen, they're going to have to become a finance company and allow you to finance that truck with them. And you can run who you have, whoever you want to run with and insure your truck with whoever you want. Or they might have to shut their doors because if they can't get good freight with lease drivers, they, there's no way they can pay a company driver. It's impossible. There's no way. So that's I think that's probably what's going to happen. They're going to be forced to be a lease operator, not, least, not a company driver, but a leasing company. Or you have company drivers and you lease trucks and people, you know, pay you for a truck lease. That's the only that's the only way they're going to survive because it just it doesn't make any sense. I'm like, well, if your MC number is destroyed, you can't get good freight as it is. And you're stealing all this money from drivers making them pay for fuel, insurance, you know, and all this um these, these additives that they got. Then how are you going to pay them as a company driver? The, the, the whole robbery scheme has been is, is foiled. That's it. The plot's been foiled. Like, yeah, I don't. I, so I just that's what I see. I see them either becoming leasing companies and company drivers, but in a company driver thing, I just don't see it. It's like being a you know, it's like being a being the, the big man on the block, except you cutting all the work and people been shopping with you for years. They you selling the, all the work. Now some new guy comes along and say, hey, you know what? All my work's uncut. Well, it's once that happens, it's pretty much nothing you can do. But, hey, though, all these recruiters calling these drivers, calling drivers that was already there, calling me every day, letting me know that, that they got freight, they got new brokers. Bro, I, I just talked to a recruiter today, and they said that they changed the quality of, of brokers that they got. They got better brokers. They got better freights. They got better clients. Bro, I'm 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 hearing from them. I, what what am I missing here? Because you saying that that the walls is caving in, but these recruiters saying, "Yo, we we still ten toes down, bro. Come on over to us. What's up?" Yo, here's the funny part about it. They do not get any good freight and no broker wants to deal with them. So if they got a new broker, it's some of their people, it's some of their people that they, you know, they got millions of dollars. So if I, if I pay you, pay you, get y'all some MC numbers, you know, y'all can go ahead and run freight. I'm going to have new brokers all the time with no problem because you create a broker. That's the first thing companies like that do when they're failing. Let's create a broker. Let's create another broker. That way we make it look good to where it's, oh, I, I, we're good, man. Our MC number's good. Well, why you still can't pull hazmat freight? They don't have a flatbed division no more. That's gone. That's been gone. I recovered a couple of them trailers last year, brought them to the yard, and they sold them trailers. And um, they were some tracks, good trailers, but certain violations and stuff that they've been doing, no one wants to deal with them. So there's, yeah, they're going to, they create the broker. There's definitely not no new brokers because I use their freight, their trip time to run some freight to get back to us home. 
I just call it fuel money freight. Shit. That's it. Or go recover a trailer for them and do some fuel money freight. They not paying enough. I, I said, man, there's no way these guys can survive over here. Every guy I done ran into, every woman I done ran into, they trying to get out of this. They always flag me down. Man, I want to ask you something. Man, man, how do I this and how do I that? Why do these people not? And I tell them straight up, find somewhere else to go, especially if you're a sap driver. And I think that's what they're really doing to in the SCA, I think that they figuring it out. They see a lot of guys going to these companies that accept SAP drivers, and then they notice that company, they're preying on the SAP driver. They can't make a dime. And they just letting them come in there, running the hell out of them. They say, oh, what's in the contract? You know, we can recover the truck uh, without you even knowing. How so? That's like me having a brand new car, and I just bought it. You mean to tell me they can just come and repo the car, and I've been making payments on it? No. That's unheard of. So, yeah, yeah they're one of the main reasons why the, the, the federal motor carriers, they're beginning to go after them. I hate it for the ones who ain't good leases. I mean, Prime and a couple other them companies out there, they got good equipment. Their driver's pretty decent. They can take home time without worrying about the truck being towed away. Because a couple of weeks ago, they asked me down in Florida. I guess the girl had this parked at the lot. They haven't been hearing from her. She's been off for a few days. And she had it parked in the wrong spot. And I took a picture of it. I told her, man, I got a load to go get. I got to go. Oh, but can you move? Can you do this? No, I'm not. I'm not. Somebody's stuffing that truck. I'm not doing it. That ain't happening. I don't mind helping somebody out, but when you want to do somebody dirty like that and they have property in the truck, you can cancel my recovery. I don't do it. I'm not moving. I'm not. I don't care if you got a driver coming there to get the truck. Let some property be in that truck. I'm not going to let that driver jump in that truck. I'm going to tell them, hell no. Let Tell them to figure it out. Somebody got stuff in there. You know what I mean? I don't want the trailer. It don't mean that much to me. I got a trailer. I can go get a load anywhere I want to get one. So, easy, man. That's interesting you said that. So I'm talking about you, Anonymous. You making money hand over foot with them. You you making money by moving some of their freight, but you got your own LLC and your own company. You just leased on. You, you ain't even bothering with all that other stuff because you can broker your own loads and stuff like that. But you recover for them, right? So it's a thousand dollars for every truck that you recover. My question to you is, how the hell do you get in the trucks, bro? Like, do you have to go back to Illinois to get a key, or is there some type of on star thing that they do with them trucks? What's up? They, 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 they. What it is? Most of the people when they recover the trucks, like. The trucks, you can already either get in them or there's a spare key somewhere around on the engine or they'll call the dealer somewhere nearby and they'll pay them like a locksmith or pay them to come unlock it. But me personally, I only grab a trailer. If it's a truck sitting up under that trailer, I don't touch it. I'm not messing with it. I tell them quick, I, I'm not messing with it. I can't because just like you had did an episode about this guy and I hope that brother gets some help, man, uh, with the, the Navy veterans' ashes and the dog tags in there. People don't understand what they're taking. They think, oh, they about to pay me two, three thousand to go recover a truck. You're not gonna get that money. You might get folks two hundred dollars. And on top of that, why you wanna run off with somebody else's property? Like, oh, well, they not coming back. They quit. They must don't want their stuff. No, that's wrong. I wouldn't dare do that. So yeah, when I go grab a trailer, if it's something in that truck, I tell the dealer, whoever that pull up with a key, no. Nope. Or if there's another driver, a new guy there, hey man, you better, you better find another place to work, bro. Don't be messing with these people. Well, what about it? It's a brand new truck. Hey, bro, I'm telling you right now, you don't know what you're about to get yourself into. Yeah, and I let them know. I'd be straight up with them. It's a bunch of us around there that at least on up under them using their insurance. I ain't going to say no names, but a couple of their LLCs, they let people do, it. you know, multiple people. So what they do when they do that, they feel like we're going to make a couple of people happy, make them look good, and hopefully they'll be our recruiting, you know, network. They'll tell other guys, hey, it's great here. No, I don't tell them, hell no, hell no. I tell them, run. I give them a list of companies to go to if they sap. Like, hey, here's a few more you can try out. As long as your violations close, they'll take you and they'll pay you. So, and you don't have to be a lease operator because this company used to have a uh, company driver. Notice they got rid of company driver. They only want lease operators. You know why? Hey, we can rob you. And we can throw somebody else in the truck, rob them, throw somebody else in the truck, and rob them. So, yeah. Yep. It's crazy, man. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. This, this is wow. Let's hear a little bit more before we get on up out of here. All right. What's going on, Mudtruckers? Welcome to Mudtrucker News. Email us at mudtruckernews at gmail.com. Definitely need to talk about this right here. I'm going to reference an article by Landline, and I'll put the links down below. It seems that the FMCSA wants to collect your lease purchase agreements for study and review. Now, I've interviewed 
hundreds of truck drivers that have leased. And there are a lot that feel that these lease purchase agreements are predatory. They're scams. And a couple things that people have brought up in the past is one is that when you're almost done paying off this lease, you know, supposedly these companies stop booking you loads, uh, stop running you. And then next thing you know, you know, you can't afford your truck. So they need you to keep on going. And it's almost like an enslavement to this truck, right? Uh, uh enslavement to this truck. Well, listen, bro, I, I myself having conversations with these good drivers out here. And I, I don't want to say that I interview more or interview less. But yes, I have conversated with drivers that tell me the same thing. I've been leasing with this company. And when it comes close to to the end, it's like the marriage has dissolved. It's like now we're going in, we're, we're filing divorce papers now. It's, I'm not getting no loads. I'm not getting in contact with my dispatcher. My dispatcher is hitting me up telling me the two the $2.99 loads are not available no more and I, he can only get a dollar fifty, a dollar and and less than a dollar loads. Now I'm sitting and I'm like real, real close to the end to pay off the truck, but they're not helping me or or giving me the successful tools so that I can pay off the truck. And I, I do agree with I taught the drivers that was in those same situations, man. Those drivers are left out to dry. Now they got to find some way in to get home because they got kicked out of the truck. Or now they're sitting and they don't know when is the next load going to be just to get them home. Because they don't even turn on the, the fuel cart unless they get a load to move. So... What do you what do you think about that, man? Do you agree with his assessment on predatory leasing uh, being a slave mentality type leasing deal? Yeah, because here's the thing: you that truck been paid off four or five times, and when you look at the mileage on it, especially with the big company in Chicago, some of them only have seventy thousand double digit numbers, fifty thousand. So you wonder, well, how many people been in this truck already? One person probably didn't run this up. No, nah, that truck's already paid off. Three or four people have been in there within a few months. They made their money and paid the truck off because some of those new trucks, they charge $800, $700, $900 a week. And you're not even making that type of money. By the time they go through that, you know, check and flip through everything and charge you, you might walk away with a negative $10 check. So that truck is getting paid off real fast. And I tell a lot of guys this. I learned this from my old head. You find that VIN, you get that VIN number. Find out who owns a truck, if the truck's ever been paid off, if someone's holding the title. You dig. Once you dig and find out what's going on, then you add up how long you've been driving for them, how much money you made, and they didn't basically stole from you. Then you go get a lawyer, and I guarantee you, a lot of people, if they sit down at the table, they say for driving a year for Super Ego. You drive a year for them or any one of them big Chicago companies. Once that lawyer adds everything up, he's going to say, wow, you basically just paid the truck off. Out of everything they stole from you, what you want to do? And you probably could take the truck. Nine times out of ten, I would not doubt it because you paid for the truck. And if they stole money from you, rightfully, you've worked. You've paid the truck off because my first truck, I mean, shoot, I worked my butt off to pay that truck off. So I can only imagine if I put somebody in there, leased them on, and he quit, and another guy, I'll get him, and another guy, and that truck would have been paid off probably in, in six months. But there's a lot of people that are failing. Maybe there are some companies that are doing this right. And if you are one of the truck drivers that leased a truck and found a lot of success with this, I'm happy for you. Comment that down below as well. And maybe even say where you did this lease purchase agreement from. But for the most part, a lot of these have been predatory and it just kind of like, it's almost like slip seating. They get you in and by the time you find out that you can't pay for the truck, next thing you know, they put in another driver and they sell this truck back five times right very interested so i'm shocked to hear him speak on predatory leasing as he as he's speaking on it because he was shining the light bright on the illinois company that same illinois company that that allegedly predatory leasing and to hear him in this video commentary right here i'm 
I'm I'm kind of shocked, bro. But this is his opinion. We're we're reacting to the whole predatory lending and the FMC's involvement with it. Now, with that said, right. with all these drivers that's complaining about predatory lending, why do you think it took so long for the FMCSA to start saying, "Hey, we got a problem here"? Well. I've heard from over there at the big company from one of the guys that work in the office. A lot of these trucks that they get and brand new trucks at that, you know, some of them that still not been paid off yet or whatever, how they get abandoned and destroyed. And they have been, how, who is it? The companies they get the trucks from that, you know, selling the trucks to finance the dealers. They're like, yo, what the heck is going on? You know, what is, how are these trucks coming back destroyed or whatever? We've had people stuff like had this. And not only that, but people are beginning to put their name out there. The industry is beginning to look, the ones that are doing it right, that's leasing the drivers, is trying to make them some money. They're starting to look now at them in that corner and say, hey, wait a minute. You know, you guys are really messing up a good thing for some people out here. Some people enjoy lease operating. Some people want to buy their own truck. Some people have pride and say, hey, man, I leased on with Prime and paid off two trucks. I got almost a mini fleet now. You can't do that over here at certain companies because they're going to make sure that truck is paid off as quick as possible. They stole as much money from you, and it's on to the new guy, just like with tax season. A lot of them guys over there, I bet you, if you took that 1099 to the proper lawyer, the proper authority, and gave them all your paperwork, all your fuel receipts, and the fake loads, a.k.a. the confirmation, I guarantee you, you probably would win that truck and some more. Well, FMCSA is looking into predatory leasing companies in particular. I'm sure they're looking at the ones out in Illinois because that's where majority of them kind of like migrate. A shout out to the mother trucker for bringing this information to us. Shout out to you, sir, Anonymous, for tagging me on it. And we got a chance to talk about it before we get out of here, because I know you're busy and you be running the Northeast, something that I won't do. But What's your opinions? Because, like I said, you're a big contributor to the uh, to the channel. What what are your opinions on some of the stories that you heard thus far, man? A lot of was going on this week, bro. What's your opinion with Tony and that dispatcher was spilling all the tea? Is it what that dispatcher was saying true? Well, it is true. They do have teams of dispatchers that do dirty work under the table. And may that driver rest in peace, you know. It was a couple of guys that ran up under him, and they all, well, he leased on a couple of trucks with one of the LLCs that I deal with, and um, he had another one or two leased on another one. He ended up dying in an accident because he was out there running like a fool, but, you know, stop a lot. God don't like ugly when you take from other people, and uh, that's something I refuse to do because I have an MC, but I had turned it off, and they presented me with that when I bought a truck from them. And I said, no, nah, I mean, I'll leave something under y'all, you know, trailer recovery, whatever. But I, I'm not letting nobody run under my MC. I'm the only one that ever ran under my MC. No, oh, we make good money. You know, we have guys, we, we can find drivers for you. You are not tearing up my MC number. No. So with that, um, the, in, the, in the threats, you know, like you say, they've been making and stuff. I would definitely get a lawyer and YouTube's legal team because it's freedom of speech. No one was disrespected or violated. And that was a true phone call. That was no AI. That was no prop. That was the real deal. And it's sad because whoever they reached out to at YouTube with all the videos about they took, they had to just, they had to flag that one. Well, well, who got that? Somebody got promised something. Just please get this off of this, making our company look bad. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And um, it's sad because, you know, it's getting down to the bottom with them. You know, they, they getting desperate. Because now you have people that's really starting to ramp up the real accusations that's really going on over there. And I, I hate to see so many people go over there with the mind frame of, um, how can I say it? You know, they want to be a boss. You want to be on operator. That ain't the place to go. They're robbing people. And they're going to rob as many people as they can before they get out the door. Because once they, once the, the federal motor carriers decide that, hey, you know what? We had enough. Go up there and chain them doors closed, remove them from the property. Everybody that's got trucks from them, I hope they're smart enough to keep them. Go retain you a lawyer, park that truck on the yard somewhere, remove the batteries, remove the GPS, and say, hey, you know what? 
I don't care who's coming to get the truck. I want my money or I want this truck. And at that point, they're going to have no choice but to release them tractor trailers of people. I guarantee you there'll be a judge involved that's going to release them trucks to people because you paid it off. You paid it off months ago, a year ago. They just been stealing from you. You could have been paid it off. So yeah, that, that whole situation, I really think, you know, you definitely grab a lawyer. Go at YouTube's legal team and find out why, why, how you managed to get this video down. Why, why did you need to take this video down? They got stuff on YouTube that's exposing these companies left and right. You do recruiter calls all the time. They don't take them down. They don't take them down. So all of a sudden now they're taking this one down. Yeah, somebody's been paid. And you got to remember, you're dealing with a greedy society. And when you got a millionaire, the owner that don't show his face, he's hiding over in Serbia. Yeah. Yeah, you can expect some real funny results in anything you do towards them, any type of retaliation. But yeah, man, I yeah, I just I hope, you know, drivers don't be a victim. You know, stop turning them trucks in. I've told plenty of people that you take that truck off and you go park that truck somewhere you confiscate it. You tell them, well, look, I get my paperwork. I got everything right. Well, I'll see you in court. You want your truck back. And you know how many people that ran off with their vehicles and they never seen them again? And they're not going to go run and cry to the federal government. There's one thing they do know. You can't pay the FBI. The FBI don't want your money. They want your time. It's not your life. So, yeah, it's definitely something, man. They need to have their new logo needs to have a ski mask and a gun because that's, they're robbing people. I mean, you want to be robbed. You don't want to make any money. You want to pull freight for 25 cents a mile. Come to death row. Oh, that's the first time I've heard that one because, like I said, I don't work for them, you know. 75, 76 percent. That's the hell. What? 75% um, of the load, my guy. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.